So, so what's very special about me, Maddox, and I spent a little time with Deborah last week talking on the phone, and I think we repeated the conversation we had even a year prior, was Mimetics is one of the companies that actually has very significant revenues in the regen space around wound healing and a couple of other areas. And I think it's really important to take note at just how significant this is because when I looked at your revenues, I was literally stunned. And even though I see you as a leader in the space, I believe the company is very undervalued, almost penalized for being in regen medicine, whereas if I were to just look at the revenue build, it's kind of stunning. So to give us an introduction to the company as the CEO, Deborah Dean. Um, Executive Vice President, not CEO. but. Um, one thing that, like we said um, when we talked on the phone, that we think is significant about the company, obviously our forward-looking statement, is um, the revenue trajectory. We've had 17 consecutive quarters of meeting or exceeding quarterly guidance. Um, we finished last year at $187 million. Uh, we're profitable. We have cash on the balance sheet. We have a strong portfolio of products. Uh, that we offer from amniotic tissue, amniotic fluid, collagen fiber products that we're taking through a 510K process, uh, bone portfolio now, a complete uh, burn portfolio we've put together. So a strong set of um, product lines that we've brought to the market. And really the growth story is 2015, as I mentioned, 187 million, 2016 revenue guidance in the 260 to $270 million range. Um, additionally, the growth drivers that we looked at, projected growth in our wound care section is 30 to 35 percent, in our uh, s surgical spine and orthopedics, 60 to 70 percent, and it's really a, a market for us that's expanding quite rapidly with some of the new products that we've added, um, and we've done a very good job of GPO, IDN contracts, penetration in that segment, uh, reimbursement, we're fully um, it, um, it covered by the max. We also have a broad portfolio of commercial coverage. And so that helps the adoption in wound care as well as the other sectors. Within five years, we believe the product mix of wound care and surgical will be 50-50. Um, so the, obviously the SSO segment is going to be growing rapidly for us. And then if you look at our recon recent acquisition of Stability Biologics, that brings some new proprietary technologies, more things to sell into existing markets, as well as the SSO market that we spoke about. Um, and then um, if you look at uh, the market potential of 2.3 billion in this space, there's a lot of market potential that's unrealized, so there's a lot more trajectory for growth with the company. And then if you look at the U.S. market overview in wound care, we have our whole uh, amniotic tissue market uh, segments with EpiFix, our cord products. In the surgical sector, AmnioFix, our Epi burn portfolio that we're just scratching the surface in the burn market. And then also in the orthopedic and spine, everything from OrthoFlow, AmnioFix, and our new Colifix and Physio products. So um, if you look Comparatively as well, our products perform much more cost effectively and have a higher efficacy rates than other products on the market. Uh, we have a number of clinical trials that have been published in uh, peer one journals um, and the growth factors and the content, for example, in Epifix compared to other products on the market, you can see that the uh, efficacy rate is quite superior and in a cost effectiveness study that we did in a head to head, um, we cost around 15, 1700 per healing of patient, and they cost around 9,000, so quite significant difference in that regard. And then um, if we look at the trial that I spoke about, the 60 patient and the 100 patient, and the um, closure rates of the product, we achieved a 92% effective rate um, against Apograph head-to-head. -head. Um, this is some of the ways that helped us uh, speed through the reimbursement paradigm because of the savings in dollars, 92 versus 1669, as well as the efficacy rate. I think I want to interrupt you right there, because now you're talking about clinical data, and I think it would be good if we could step back a little bit and look at those revenues and the sales. The bulk of your revenues today, where do they come from? The bulk of our revenues today come from the wound care market space. And then, um, as I mentioned in and the... 
And what are you selling into that space exactly? Our Epifix and our Amniofix product lines, primarily Epifix, which is our regenerative medicine allograft um, that is sold in physician offices, outpatient clinics, inpatient settings, really all those three um, points of care. Okay, and this is essentially a chorionic membrane, is that right? Well, we have um, 20 plus patents, 100 pending. It's actually a bilayer graft of amnion and chorion okay. um, that is processed uh, specifically according to our patents that, ha that retain over 226 growth factors. Right, and you've been working on this for some time. And this, mm -hmm. what's, what I find fascinating here is that you're going back now and you're doing trials but the reality is this product kind of was approved on the homologous, and you can remind me of the FDA regulation. Yeah, the 361 HCTP regulations. It was primarily approved many years ago through that pathway. It's still registered through that pathway. But what we've gone back and done is a series of clinical trials to support the efficacy of the product. We have INDBLAs underway now, uh, 510K pathways we're pursuing, so a lot of other pathways with additional product offerings. And so how big can this product itself become? I understand you have other initiatives going on, but just in the current wound settings where you're using it today, how big can these numbers be? They can be quite large. I mean, we haven't projected specifically those numbers, um, but um, externally, I should say. But um, they have a lot of room for growth. I mean, if you look at the wound care market space itself is quite large, um, as well as just uh, unfortunately in our culture and diabetes and other contributing factors, there's more and more wound care that's needed. Uh, we're expanding into Europe. Frank's been in Europe quite a lot lately, so, um, and really all over the uh, globe. And so we think that we've just scratched the surface in the U.S. We have it even in OUS, and so there's a lot of potential just for this one product. So tell me a little bit of how cultural attitudes are different in the U.S. versus Europe, and, and what percentage of sales is U.S., and when will we see Europe really coming on stream? Um, I'll talk about just the diversity uh, in regard to wound care and who treats wound care outside uh, the United States. The United States is primarily uh, physicians and a wound care center, maybe a, a DPM or a, a podiatrist or a vascular surgeon. Um, in other countries, it's, it's the dermatologist or it's the plastic surgeon, so it's very different in each market. So uh, you have to go out and find those answers uh, and then work with those individuals to um, expose them to what the tissue is, what it has in it, what's the capabilities of it, and then provide opportunities for them to see it in their own hands because we all know that physicians work uh, pretty much in one way, which is they'll look at the data and then they want to try it. And if it works in their hands, they feel good. But if it doesn't, then you've got a challenge. And how about reimbursement and other factors in it's, Europe versus the U.S.? It's the same. It's the same. <laughs> we like to say every country is different, and it, it truly is because they all have different authorities and different ways. But there are certain areas like uh, NICE in, in the U.K. Uh, if you get NICE approval, it, it helps across the board. So uh, a lot of other countries, are, oh, you already have NICE approval or FDA approval. This helps with that process. But they do have their own processes. And we have our products registered in certain of the countries already, and we're going through the registration for others, as well as the reimbursement cycle. Specifically to the first part of your question, about 3% of our revenue in 2015 was OUS, um, but we expect that to grow this year. And the back half of this year, Q4, um, we'll see more and more revenues going, um, having come from OUS. So you did just say 3%. Three. So you Three haven't percent. really even gotten started outside the United so, States. Yeah, so imagine we've barely scratched the service in the United States. And yeah, right. Barely I scratching can, you can see that. So it's, it's a and, huge market. And I was stunned when, you, uh, when I asked you how many employees at the company. 600. Yeah, so 600 employees. And are most of those people in sales? About half. <laughs> okay. okay, what are the other half doing? Um, well, we have a very strong uh, R&D team. Um, we believe in developing new products and bringing those to market. Uh, we invest significantly in uh, manufacturing and QARA. Um, and um, so th those uh, spectrums to support the sales and the R&D are the biggest sections. And, and 
when you look now, let's talk about the pipeline. Uh, you made an acquisition. Tell me what things look very attractive to you going forward. And, and also remind me, where is your balance sheet? Um, the balance sheet's in really good shape. Um, to answer the first part of your question, um, we actually are always looking at opportunities uh, either to acquire or to partner with. Um, we have strong partnerships in the distribution area, um, Medtronic, Zimmer, as well as others. And we, um, we believe that you know, there's other opportunities to round out our portfolio in other areas. Um, we talk to literally companies every week, it feels like, um, that are interested either in an investment or they're interested in um, looking at uh, maybe a partnership or an acquisition like we did with Stability. Stability made a lot of sense for us because it accelerated our SSO penetration. They had a lot of... Sorry, SSO. Um, our spine, surgical and orthopedic, sorry. Um, we, I think we all develop a lot of acronyms, we don't do. we? Um, uh, but it really accelerated that penetration because they already had the distributors and agents in place, as well as they brought uh, some burn and um, bone products into the portfolio that made sense. So they were so, a manufacturer and a good. So back up a little bit with me and let's talk about what did you actually get from them? Sure. So we got one uh, distributor agent uh, relationships, contracts that were already in place that we can sell existing of our products through, um, as well as um, new product market spaces. Um, that's from the sales side. From the manufacturing side, they have, um, they have a skin-based product that helped round out our bone portfolio that we were uh, going to market with. Um, because I, we have found that our product works very well in the bone space. We have a clinical trial getting ready to initiate in the burn sector. Um, for example, we just got, um, and we've shown some early, early data, we just got approval by uh, Georgia Medicaid and they approved us not only for chronic wounds but burns as well. So describe the product to me. What, what is it? Well, there's two, uh, there's really two factors. One, our Epifix product, which we use in wound care, is highly effective in burns. Uh, it's been used actually for the last few years specifically on faces, hands, anything that you have to make sure that the joints return to movement and that you don't have impediment from scar tissue. It works highly effectively that way. But as you know, in burns, sometimes they're much larger. You need much larger sheets. You need actually skin. Well, they have a skin product um, that is an adjunct to that. And once you put those two together, you get a lot larger, larger penetration of the number of burn patients you can help. That's fascinating. So what is a skin product? Is it cells in a carrier matrix? Well, it's, um, it's actually um, cadaver skin that you take, you manufacture a process a certain way that's brought to bear so that you can control uh, with Epifix the, um, um, the coverage that you need to help impede infection. You always see her walk up when you're close to time. <laughs> We're fine. So, but, it, but what I hear you saying is a decellularized product that still retains some of the cytokines and other... Yeah, uh, things uh, that other help kind with of the healing process. Okay. Very and then, oh, the one other product, they have a bone product called Physio that has um, a very good delivery mechanism that helps with... Um, some of the uh, minerals that it brings to bear that has a high rate, and we're starting some scientific and clinical trials in that area also. So two primary products, and then the distribution channels. Gotcha. So on the one hand, you're building out the sales and distribution, and on the other hand, you're looking at loading the pipeline and kind of getting becoming more effective in other areas like burns or orthopedic. When we talk about bone, what type of indications in bone are we talking about? Spinal fusion? Yes, yeah, spinal procedures. We're working with some of the leading physicians in that area that have been using the product, so um, definitely spinal applications. Good. In the final minute remaining, do me a favor and just focus with me on what the catalysts are and the reasons why I need to buy the stock now. Um, we, <laughs> the reason you need to buy the stock is that we're going to be in the 260 to 270 range. We're making money every quarter. We have a strong balance sheet and we have a portfolio of products that will propel us far past the 260 to 270 range in the coming years. And where's the market cap of the company today? It's about 925 right before I walked up here. Okay, yeah, pretty, pretty great value. Thank you very much for sharing Thank the story you. with us. Thank you.